Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare Remastered in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the W1200 shotgun. And spoiler alert, this gun was very challenging to use. It shouldn't come as a surprise that in a game where you can die nearly instantly at almost any range and weapons have laser-like accuracy, the shotguns are very, very challenging. I've got gameplay from a couple of different maps, a couple of different attachment setups, and most notably, I'm changing up my red perks a lot in this video. So you'll see some instances where I get more hit markers than others. Jumping into the stats, this weapon will deal 40 damage up close and decrease down to 10. Now that is per pellet, and you have 8 pellets per shot. Like most shotguns, there is a colossal difference between its optimal and minimal ranges, and perhaps that's maybe not the most useful thing to look at. We could instead look at our total damage per shot being 320 to 80, which is of course extremely high and overkill up close. When you put stopping power on it, that can increase up to 448 damage per shot and 144 at its maximum range. One of the neat things about that is if you are very fortunate enough to hit the majority of your pellets that means it can one shot kill even at its maximum range with stopping power. However I don't always recommend stopping power on the weapon. Unfortunately, shotguns in this game do not give you any bonus whatsoever for headshot damage. Headshots deal regular 1.0x damage and are always useless, of course, unless you're going for camos. I never go for headshots. You want to aim center of mass, body, get as many pellets hitting as possible. The maximum range of the shotgun is 12.7 meters, which is not very far, unfortunately, and I know throwing up a number like that is a little bit arbitrary, so I tested it out in a private match. We're going to pretend that the door is roughly human size, and you will see that for my first couple of shots, the bullets have disappeared. They're not hitting, they're not doing any damage. But if I take just a step forward, I will begin to hit the door. So this is roughly your maximum range on the shotgun. Any further than that, and you will not be able to hit people. However, what is probably a more useful bit of information is your probable one-shot kill range. And I tend to kill people at about 10 meters in one shot. That's with stopping power, my you a little bit less with the others. I just assume that most of you are going to be running that because it's the most popular perk. Uh, but it's just a little bit less than the optimal range. You'll get one-shot kills, and especially if they've injured, it'll be very, very easy to get one-shot kills. The maximum rate of fire is 106 rounds per minute. That's roughly twice the rate of fire as a standard sniper rifle in most Call of Duty games. However, you cannot reload cancel the pump animation. Uh, there's some bugs you can do with jitter mods and strange controllers and you can like jitter mod the shotgun and make it spam but if you're playing like a normal non-cheating good human being you're going to need to make sure that you pump the shotgun before your next shot you're not going to be able to shoot sprint away and then shoot again you'll sprint away and then come out of sprinting and find out uh oh I actually have to pump my shotgun before I can shoot it again it's a terrible habit in Call of Duty games it gets me killed a lot so I would recommend that you make sure that you actually pump and put that next shell in there before you sprint away and uh, when it comes to stats and stuff like that I'm gonna say that the one-shot kill range on the W1200 is not significantly better than that of the M1014, which is the only other shotgun in the game. As a matter of fact, they are very similar in a lot of ways. Okay, so this next bit of testing is rather boring, but it's only about a minute long, but it's important to understand how the shotguns in this game work, so bear with me. I'm shooting the walls here in vacant, just hip fire, and then aiming down sights, and I thought I got a positive right there. I was like, whoa, oh, wait a minute, that's kind of crazy. You can see that they added a bunch of artificial pellets, kind of like birdshot, to obscure the spread of the shotgun, so that visually it impacts the wall differently, but if you get close, you can see the bigger pellets. And at first, First, I was thinking that there was going to be a difference between aiming down sights and hip fire. However, after testing and looking very closely at the pellets between hip fire and aiming down sights, except for that one fluke, there doesn't seem to be a difference between hip firing and aiming down sights. At least not one that I was able to discern, at least not a pattern that was by any means easy. So for the majority of your experiences with this shotgun, I would recommend not aiming down sights unless you need to or unless it helps you aim. Anything else, it's just better to hip fire. 
But speaking of aiming down sights, even though it doesn't necessarily give you any benefits, the W12000 has incredibly fast aim down sight strafing speeds. It has the same sidestepping speeds as, shot as not shotguns, as submachine guns when you're ADSing, so you can actually corner check people with this shotgun very easily. You can strafe a lot, and I do find myself doing it a bit because the auto aim or aim assist is better when you aim down sights, and I'm used to aiming down sights and aiming. Sometimes I over swipe and miss with the hip fire sometimes the aim assist doesn't catch in so with this one I do actually aim down sights and kind of corner check people not because it gives me any sort of real tangible statistical benefit on pellet spread but just because I find it more comfortable I would recommend that you try either one and do whichever one you find to be the most comfortable when it comes to reload speeds on the W1200 it's slow of course because it's a shotgun and you've got to reload one shell at a time thus it's going to reload very slowly However, since it gets a lot of one-shot kills, you're probably not going to reload it too much. If you do two or three full reloads in a life, you're either spamming a lot or you've massacred the entire enemy team. When it comes to the hipfire spread in general, like what if it's good, bad, ugly, that sort of stuff, because we're kind of moving into the accuracy part here, it actually has tighter hipfire spread than the M1014, but not by much. It's just got statistically slightly tighter hipfire spread. Just a, just a smidge, you honestly probably will not notice. This is normally where I would talk about the recoil of a weapon, uh, and instead I'm going to talk about the recoil and some of the attachments put together. Regardless of what the in-game stat chart says, the foregrip is of limited use. I actually prefer the red dot most of the time because it allows my iron sights to be much clearer. The foregrip doesn't tighten up your hipfire accuracy in any of my testing or on the online stat charts. I didn't uh, find any super tangible benefit. Now, the W1200 does kick a surprising amount, especially Especially when you're spamming it. If you're shooting it at that maximum 106, it can drift up faster than you would think from a shotgun. So if you do have issue with that initial jarring kick, maybe the foregrip is good, but it's not super useful. And there aren't like a ton of attachments for this weapon. This isn't a modern Call of Duty. You've got foregrip and red dot sight, and that is it. There's no way to get additional range or anything like that. But now we're hitting kind of the juicy part of the episode, near to the very end. The W1200 is equally viable with stopping power. UAV jammer, juggernaut, double tap, and overkill. You've seen me using it in this video with stopping power, UAV jammer, and juggernaut, but bear with me. Stopping power, of course, increases your lethality and one shot kill range. It is the standard go to red perk for everything in Call of Duty, so that's not really surprising that it works well with stopping power. Um, what is a little bit surprising though is that it doesn't work, it's not like your benefit is that insane or that you can't just get a little bit closer because you're already getting close anyway and just one shot kill without it. So I personally find UAV Jammer to be the overall best because it allows me to sneak up and get very close to people in a game that has a lot of UAV spam and I can still one shot them pretty consistently and even when I can't I can follow up very quickly with the second shot. UAV Jammer works just as good as stopping power and so does Juggernaut in the right situation because Juggernaut gives you the health that you need to challenge to take a couple of shots to get your second shot off in case you miss in case they dodged in case you were not inside that optimal range and it works just just as well because your damage penalty isn't too significant. Similar with double tap, double tap allows you to get your second shot out significantly faster, therefore there being less time in between for the enemy to react or for you to take shots. So double tap is very viable. And overkill, I know a not insignificant number of snipers that have a sniper rifle and use this as a secondary weapon, uh, kind of like you would in Modern Warfare 2. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think it's a great secondary weapon. It's better than any of the pistols in the game for a secondary and that's my primary use for it is that when I find it laying on the ground I will go out and pick this up and drop my deagle drop my USP or something like that and use this as a secondary because you can absolutely shock people when you pull out a shotgun on them as a secondary weapon but that being said I don't think that the W1200 is a really good weapon in Modern Warfare Remastered and there's no real viability for it especially not as a primary Modern Warfare Remastered and COD 4 in general is a game where you can dive very, very quickly in one or two shots all the way across the map from a variety of weapons that shoot very fast, very accurately, punch through walls very, very easily. And because of all this, to be perfectly honest with you, the M16 is almost as good of a shotgun as the W1200. 
and this is just not needed. There's no real reason to handicap yourself to that sort of limited range outside of maybe playing like shipment or some kind of niche strategies or for fun. It can be fun to do. You can kill people with it, but it's never going to be competitive. You're never going to win game battles with this. You're never going to uh, slay the enemy team with this. This is just kind of a for fun weapon, and that's where you should just make a mental note to break it out. Break it out for fun, pick it up to replace your secondary, do not rely on it as an amazing primary. Guys, that's all for this episode of In Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.